Hi, I'm Christy Clarkson, Marketing Specialist at Power Factors. Today I'm talking with Robert Johnson. Robert has been with Power Factors since 2016 and is one of our senior market advisors, working closely with product, technology, and sales teams to help guide our development and execution strategies. Hey, Robert, thanks again for being here. Hey, Christy, it's a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me. Last time, we talked about some of the physical differences between BESS, solar, and wind assets, and the ways BESS supports the grid during the intermittency of solar and wind assets. Now, can you explain some of the challenges of managing and maintaining BESS assets compared to wind and solar? Yeah, certainly. You know, it's helpful to keep in mind that the core objectives of any energy asset owner is really, one, to maximize revenue, two, minimize operating expenses, and three, reduce and mitigate risk profiles. And really the goal is to optimize all three at the same time. But doing this for BESS is just more complex than it is for solar and wind. With solar and wind, you're trying to sell as much energy as possible from your available fuel, the sun and wind, while tightly managing your operating costs. You're typically operating under a long-term power purchase agreement or PPA, but you know BESS doesn't really generate energy. It stores and then exchanges that energy. So they're utilized differently. One common operating strategy is to charge the batteries at a low price and then sell it later at a higher price, which is a process referred to as energy arbitrage. In California, where I live, for example, generation is usually abundant in the early afternoon while loads in the grid are lighter. So we can store this energy during the day and then sell it in the late afternoon or early evenings when usage has ramped up and prices are higher. And the greater the spread between that low and high price, the greater the revenue generated from that energy asset. And you know, conceptually, arbitrage is pretty straightforward, but in reality, there are other complexities to consider, such as external factors that impact pricing volatility. So for example, local congestion on the grid can drive prices down in specific locations, or increasing penetrations of storage solar and wind assets in a particular region can also change pricing dynamics, though usually on a longer time horizon. But the point is, you know, these impacts will change your operating strategy and your revenue profile, which means you have to adapt to changing market conditions and dynamics. You also best are increasingly deployed in what we call a hybrid configuration. Most often this is with solar, so solar plus storage, but it's also with wind and storage and maybe even all three together in some cases. And in this scenario, you have to forecast your production from solar and wind, as well as understand pricing so that you can generate an optimal dispatch schedule, your best or your storage system. You know, when should you charge and when should you discharge? You know, as a good example, you may be expecting from your forecast and your analysis that you're going to be curtailed during a certain time frame, And if you can sell your energy from your storage system ahead of that curtailment so that the storage system has enough capacity to receive that energy during curtailment, then you can sell that later. Energy arbitrage is just one operating mode. You know, BESS also participate in ancillary markets like resource adequacy and spinning and non-spinning reserves, frequency regulation. But that's probably a topic better saved for later because it gets pretty complex quickly. But regardless of your operating model, you still need to respect the physical reality and constraints of the batteries themselves. This means observing the proper charge and discharge profiles, balancing state of charge, recalibrating the system at appropriate times, removing battery strings when temperatures have exceeded certain thresholds, and, and a whole bunch more. What are some of the questions best owners and operators should be concerned with? The sort of questions best owners and operators are likely asking themselves each day are things like, you know, what is my current operating status? Is my system operating within expected tolerances? If something's wrong, can I pinpoint the device or system involved? And what is the severity level of the issue? Which translates to how urgently do I need to act? When did the issue start? What's the ongoing revenue impact, for example, you know, which requires understanding current market pricing and what your contractual commitments are? Am I nearing compliance or warranty thresholds, which will change depending on who you are, if you're the owner or say the operator or the service provider? And once you know what the issue is, you know, where do you find instructions, operating procedures, tools, skill sets needed to resolve the issue? You know, Trying to figure out, for example, who is responsible for fixing a particular issue can be a challenge. How much will the repairs cost? How often has this type of event occurred on this asset, on this site, or for similar assets on this site, or even different but similar asset classes across 
other sites with other OEMs or other service providers. So given the volume and velocity of data, the variety of stakeholders and workflows involved, you really need specialized software to answer these questions and to manage your day-to-day -day operations effectively. And you know, considering that the majority of revenue for best systems are often generated on only a fraction of days within the year, it's absolutely essential that you can answer these questions quickly. Thanks, Robert. See you in the next video where we'll talk about some of the software applications and systems available to owners and operators of BESS and wind and solar assets. Thanks, Christy. It was a real pleasure. I hope that was helpful. Talk to you next time.